Once upon a time, this the memory. It's like synergy. Life the hardest teacher y'all could ever get the master. Get a test first, and y'all get that lesson after. Steve's never stressing them G's. The What's going on, everybody? I like to welcome y'all back to Sync Music Mondays. Every Monday, every Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Times. Y'all know the vibes, man. Financial literacy, music licensing in the coolest form. As always, just educate. And then shout out to all of y'all, all the subscribers, all the listeners. Shout out to Nigeria. Shout out to Ghana. Shout out to Belize. Shout out to Italy. Everywhere we charting crazy worldwide, you know, it's really dope to see, man. Glad y'all tapped in, man. We appreciate y'all. And as always, we're going to start off with the word of the day, man. Something motivational, inspirational to get y'all through y'all day. And today's word of the day, we say this all the time, but, you know, we got to just kind of just repeat it. Persistence wears down resistance. I'll say that again. Persistence wears down resistance. A lot of times in life, we encounter different obstacles like it did but regardless of what you counter you always got to stay persistent man never give up on your dreams a lot of people give up on their goals man you know and they try to spew that negativity you know because they didn't achieve what they wanted but always stay persistent stay consistent and that is the word of the day but check this out today today we got a fire guest in the building she's a boss she's a businesswoman she is a musician she is a writer I mean, she's had music just featured in so much different content. It's crazy. I mean, placements, so many placements. The placements got placements. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't hear me. It's a lot of placements. So, you know, we're going to get into a lot of gems with her, talk about what she's accomplished, where she's going. It is no other than Tamara Bubble. What's going on, Queen? Hey, 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 Bubble on deck. Thank you for that intro. So lovely. So good to be here. What up? Uh, yo, every, everything's healthy. Listen, we happy to have you on the show. And, um, you know, it's going to be a dope episode just to talk about how you got started, um, you know, when you transition into licensing, all these different things. So I kind of gave like a kind of a glossed overview. Could you tell the people in your own words, who is Tamara Bubble? Sure. Uh, so I'm a rapper, singer, songwriter, um, author, publisher, podcaster. I'm DIY till I die. So like it's self label self-publisher self-admin self all that self money like i'm just um a believer in being an indie artist being a business more so than being an artist um i do both equally um the art, art artistry is um authentic but everything else is business um and that's what i focus on um and that's how i got to where i am now so i want to talk about that fire 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 so like when you first got started in music like what was your first introduction to music like can you talk about that? Like, you know, what, what was the first song or your first memory that really got you like kind of just hooked? Like, yo, I like this. And then eventually something that you wanted to do yourself. Uh, so I've always loved music. I grew up singing in church. My background is definitely gospel. Um, I've always been singing. Uh, as far as pursuing music as a career, I didn't start that till like, actually, I never thought I would start that. Um, I was an accountant by day <laughs> and I took a sabbatical where I was off work for like two months. And um, I did a whole bunch of acting and modeling. And I met a, a producer at one of the photo shoots. And he was like, oh, I heard you got pipes. Let me hear something. I sung for him. I sung a church song. And he was like, oh, you can sing, but do you write? And I looked at him and I said, I do now. And I have been pursuing music since that day. Um, I started rapping then. I started writing because I was writing. The thing was, he was going to uh, submit the music to Jasmine Sullivan. I love her voice, love her vocals. So I wrote a bunch of songs. And then I was like, nah, this is my music. Like, she can't sing these words because the songs were so personal. Mm -hmm. um so i i knew i had to deliver the music and so then i just started doing that i haven't looked back fire 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 now you said you said you sang a church song what was the church yeah. song that you sang it was actually an acapella song called i'm free and it's not even like a really popular song i don't think many people know it but mm -hmm. um i always get called on to sing it like if i go back to a church that i grew up in or like something like that where people know that i sing the song they'll ask me to sing it and so I just, it's the first song that comes to mind. If you, if you were to ask me on the street to sing a song, I'm, that's what I'm probably going to sing. When I was like out on the streets hustling and stuff, I would be singing that song too sometimes. So, yeah. That's what's up. You know, and that's <laughs> dope too, because you know what? It's like church songs, they normally soulful. Like, you know, everybody that grew up in the church, they know what it is. Like those actually like the best representation of your vocals because you really mm -hmm. actually showing your range. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So true story. 
Yeah, facts all day. So that's dope. So, all right, so you, you auditioned for the cat, you work with him. So what was that first track that you did that actually got placed? Like, and, and where did it get placed? Okay, so none of that music that I made at the very beginning, I don't think any of that really has gotten placed. Um, some songs that I've made like over six years ago has gotten placed. Let's, let's do this. I failed for years. I want to say like nearly a decade. <laughs> And like, I was making music the whole time. I was promoting, I was performing. I was like building my chops as far as performance and stuff like that. Like I said, I grew up singing in church. So I was never like afraid to perform. That part has always been in me anyway. But um, as far as music licensing success, I hadn't started to see that till like five years ago. And when it took off, it went through the roof. But before that I was getting scammed. I like everything. It wasn't just going bad. It was going worse. It was going like down. Like it was like, I was losing money all the time. I was even stuff that I was paying for that was supposed to be legitimate, it was, I wasn't seeing it move the needle in my career, period. So like when I found Sync and started to understand how that worked, I just put that same effort and energy that I was already using just into music licensing and then everything went up. So wow. yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? That's a major gem. And I kind of want to circle back on that because you did say that you got scammed. It's, it's bug because like, I want to say two Whole weeks lot. ago. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, yo, that's facts. And we, you know, yo, that's real talk. We got to talk about that because two weeks ago we had an episode called uh Protect Your Net, right? And we was talking about like, you know, the predatory landscape in terms of how a lot of people and companies take advantage of artists with sync licensing. So can you talk about that a little bit? Like, you know, just keeping it a stack, like what were those things like that kind of you know took advantage of you in the beginning when you were trying to establish yeah. yourself? Um, so I think I was always susceptible to scams because I, I believed in me so hard. Like it was like, okay, you need me to invest in me. No problem. I'm gonna do that. So, and for me too, like I wasn't researching, um, the people as much as I should have been. Like I thought, okay, I'm from Brooklyn. I know how to read people. I see hustles every day. I know what's up. Like when it's the music business, when it's contracts, when it's business, you need to know the business. Like that's the purest, most uh, simplest way to stop getting scammed. And that's actually how I found music licensing because my goal was, Okay, yo, if I could just stop getting scammed, I'm gonna be good because I had money to invest in my career. It was just not going to anything productive, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things with scams, what artists just need to like pay attention to, this producers, this songwriters, this is whoever got bread and willing to spend it on their career. Like don't, don't pay attention to those sweet nothings in your ear. I'm telling you, they're gonna whisper it. Oh, that song is fire. Oh, that song is hot. Oh, I can get that song on all these streaming playlists. Oh, I can get that song with all these um, bloggers. Like whatever the hustle is, they could do it all. They could get it. And matter of fact, what you're going to notice too, it's crazy because I talk about this in my book uh, from Sync to Superstar, but they'll tell you, oh, you got a budget for 5,000. They know exactly how you can use it. Oh, you got a budget for 50K. They know exactly where you can use it. Like they know how to spend your money. Then when your money come out your pocket, they can either get ghosts. They either do stuff that's like, oh, didn't go this way. Oh, but when they singing them sweet songs in your ear, everything's going to go up. Everything's going to go, you're going to take off. You're going to blow up. You're going to go viral. All the things that you need to hear to give the money, they're going to tell you that. Mm -hmm. So as an artist, you can't go into it looking to be pleased by like, oh, we love your music. We can make you a star. Like, they're going to say that. It's, it's coming. They, look, that's how they sell, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but obviously, when you're an artist and you're pursuing your career, most people are ignoring your music. Most people looking sideways. When you like, Get that music out my face. Like, when, they, when you come with them CDs, when you come with them promo cards, when you come mm -hmm. with whatever promo material, they don't even want your free T-shirt. Like, that's how much they don't want to hear your music. So you got to keep that in mind as an artist. They're like, yo, it's a gang. And they know that. And they know if they people please, if you're new to this game and you got money, they're going to get your money. They're going to run you for it. Mm -hmm. So it's not to say that everybody is scamming, but it is to say that um, I didn't stop getting scammed until I figured out music licensing because I no longer needed to spend money. Mm -hmm. I probably would still be getting God if I need to spend money on radio. I need to spend money on streaming playlists. I need to spend money on promo. I don't spend no money no more and the stream is still going. So that's how I know I need to focus on music licensing because you can't scare me because I ain't got to pay for nothing. Mm -hmm. Only thing I got to go do, let me go get a graphic for this single that's about to drop because I, it's going to be on a TV show because these millions of people going to go listen to this song. I'm going to have this song out whenever it airs <clears> on TV. <throat> so how are you going to scare me? I ain't spending no money or nothing. I ain't getting no radio play. You ain't going to play my song at 3 a.m. with nobody listening because I don't need radio play. Ain't nobody even listening to radio. So like when you start thinking like that, it's like, oh, word, I need to focus on music licensing because they're going to promote my music for free and they're going to pay me to do it. Mm. So I'm not, I don't spend money on promo no more. And I have millions of streams. Like, and I don't care whether the streams go up or not because I get paid before the stream ever take off, before the song ever release. I'm going to get paid. So like the focus is different. 
Um, and, and that's lovely. That's a beautiful thing. You can move differently as an artist when you is on music licensing. Facts, facts. That look, <clears throat> that's the jury store right there. Cause you dropping the gems right there. You know what I'm saying? Like all day, mm -hmm. like that's straight gems. It's like, you know, artists get taken advantage of because like you said, a lot of times they're so passionate about their music. They're passionate yep. about what they do and people prey on that. You know what I'm saying? Because it can be yep. an, an emotional exchange, right? It's like you put all your effort and your time into writing this music, recording it, and you know, you're invested in that, you know, but mm -hmm. the same way that you're invested in your craft, it, there are people out there that are invested in separating you from your money. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So it's like, yep. you know, like you said, you got to know the business and you got to stay just intelligent to the point where you don't allow people to take advantage of you. And that's the dope part about sync. Like you said, like it's such a dope space, whereas you don't got to get taken advantage of. It's either they're going to place your song or they don't. And if they place mm -hmm. your song and you own the rights to your song, you're golden. You're getting mechanical royalties. You're getting, you know, money on the front and money on the back and you got your publishing set up. So there's so yep. many ways that you can flip that, you know? Absolutely. So, you know, it's, it's not the moment of no, it's magic. I feel like sync is magic. I, every time I look around, I'll be saying like, yo, I love sync. Like it's the best, in my opinion, it is the single most best way for an indie unsigned artist and their unknown songs to take off. I, no money out of pocket, no promo budget, no record label publisher. You're going to be your publisher. Mm -hmm. um, and so I teach that now because it's just like, yo, there's so many artists out here. They don't know. It's too many opportunities. I can't even get all the money. I have a sync agency. I rep artists. Like there's too many opportunities. There's, I can't even pitch to all of them. So that's why I was like, yo, let me teach these people so they can go figure this stuff out themselves. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's that's fire. That's fire. And sidebar to me, I got to ask you because I'm from Queens, right? But hey, you, but listen, I, I ain't know Brooklyn, you from, Brooklyn, look, look, I, I, like, I, ain't, I ain't know you from Brooklyn till you set up like a tell you from Brooklyn. <laughs> Fort Green, yo. Fort Green. Oh, my people in Canarsie now though, but I ain't been there so long. I feel like I lost the accent. Don't, don't, mm. I lost it. But anyway, <laughs> I'm still Brooklyn till the that's, day I die, but that's dope. What part of Queens you from? That's it. Southside Jamaica, Queens. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, so, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But you know, it's, it's, it's dope. Cause it's like, you know, I think, especially coming from the city, it's like it gives you a certain type of tenacity. So at the end of the day, it's like, you know, we used to hustling. We used to getting it like we used to doing what we got to do. And that's that's a big part of it, too. It's like understanding the business, but also having that fortitude and that mentality because you got to have tough skin in this business. You know what I'm True saying? Story. Like, True that's, story. That's... Yo, I'll say this. Like even uh, so in my book from Sink to Superstar, I start off calling your music trash because here's why music is subjective. When I make my songs, I think I'm the greatest rapper. I think my songs are hits. Every one of them. It don't matter how many songs I got. And I got hundreds of songs. You don't think every artist feels that way? So if you got any kind of confidence about you, you think your music is the best. But there's people out here that think it's trash. And it don't matter. Because if you're getting paid from it, just make what you love and go get money. Like, that should be the goal. So stop looking for people to say, oh, I love your song. Oh, I like this. Oh, I okay, I don't care whether you like it or not. You're going to hear it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go get it licensed so you have to hear it and hate that you hear it. Matter of fact, <laughs> like a lot of the comments, yo, I'm not playing. Like some of the stuff I get sing placements on, the comments is all shade. It's all, oh, I hate that. I hate this song. I hate this ad. I hate, but you hear it. And I didn't pay for it. Matter of fact, they paid me and now they promoting it. So it's yeah. like you get you get these production companies, you get these big names, these HBOs, these Netflixes, go work my music. Like you're basically telling them to go work for you and they're going to pay you to do it. Like who pays you to promote your music? I don't know nobody else that do that. I don't know no other way to get money like that where you're going to pay me and then you're going to go promote my song. That's a fact. Crazy. That's a fact. And, and you know what? That's a dope thing that I tell artists all the time too. The mere fact that you can create a song, you can get it placed, and you don't got to pay no publicist because that company already has all that stuff already locked and loaded. They're going to promote it for you. They're going to put hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars in the marketing that promoted it. And you're just going to benefit on the back end and the front end. Like, it's a beautiful thing, man. You know, Look, you don't even got to find your fans. Like, you know, you usually spend a whole lot of money running Facebook ads. Let me test this audience. Let me test that. Let me see like the lookalike audience, all of that stuff. Put your money in your pockets because <laughs> when they get the placement, they're going to put your song on a TV show. They have 20 million um, viewers already. Like HBR mm -hmm. already got the viewers. Mm -hmm. You don't got to go on Facebook and try to figure out how to find the fans. Get your song on the TV show and the fans of that TV show going to go find your music. And they're going to feel like, yo, this artist is dope. How come I never heard of them? The ones that don't like you, they ain't going to check for you. The ones that like you going to go check for you, give you more streams. And the ones that don't like you, it don't matter because you didn't pay to reach them. 
It's mm-hmm. one thing if you're paying money for ads and you reaching them and they don't like it, they putting this is trash in the comments because mm-hmm. that's how they talk real greasy in them comments when you throw a video up, when you throw whatever up and oh, they don't yeah, know you yeah. if you unsign. They they super grease, like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that's that's big facts. And, you know, like we said, in terms of like having tough skin, like that's a major gem for the artists out there, man. It's like, yo, don't trip off of what people say. Everybody going to have an opinion at the end of the day. But like Tamara said, look, as long as you get into the bag, and you're happy at what you do, yo, who cares about opinions? You know what I'm saying? Opinions, Look, opinions don't pay nobody's bills, man. True story. You know? I say this, like, if you're an artist right now listening, listening to this, can you think of three artists right now that you can't stand that's making money? And if yes, you be doing music the way you want to, because there's going to be people out there that can't stand you and you're still going to be making money. Just go pursue singing. That's it. That's a fact. That, and that's I know fact. artists know a bunch of artists that's like, how they getting money? How they got, I can't stand them songs. Oh, they so whack. Oh, they so trash. And they making all this money. So just go out there and be whack, be trash and go get this money. That's a fact. That's a, that's a major key. That's a major key. You know, at the end of the day, it's like run your own race. That's one thing that I realized too, is like, yo, don't compare yep. yourself to what other people are doing, what type of music they making. Cool. Good for them. As long as you happy, you passionate about what you're doing and you getting paid, that's all that matters. You know what I mean? Yep. So, you know, that's a major key. I wanted to ask you, too, um, what's one song that you're, like, really proud of? You would say, like, I, I know you got mad placements, but, like, what's one record that just be burning it up? Like, that's one that gets mad placements all the time for you. Um, so this song, it gets a lot of placements, but I like it. It actually has the most streams right now, too. It's called Self Motivated. The reason why I like it, because it's just kind of my, my mantra. Like, I always, I'm just a go-getter, just a hustler, and I'm going to do it. I don't need the reason. I don't need, like, if I feel like doing something, if I say I'm going to do something, if I set my mind to do something, I'm going to do it. Um, so it's just kind of like my my life's theme song. But the reason that I love it so much, and it's because it's the same. Like, so the song got placed on Insecure, right? Michelle Obama heard the song. She put it on one of her playlists, and then it, like, took off from there. So wow. I, the reason why I love it is I just love sing. Like, I love all the music that I make, but that one was just like, yo, the president's wifey heard it. Heard it. <laughs> That's and big. loved it and like <laughs> yo she put it on her playlist because she had a podcast so she mm-hmm. put she actually put a bunch of playlists of artists that are not known told people to check them out and they just listen because of the influence now how many artists have spent money to pay somebody to go promote their song like they go get a stripper or whatever to like dance or whatever and play the song in the background okay i got michelle doing it for free Fact. like i say how much i don't got money to pay michelle can you go post my song on my on your social media? She ain't gonna do it. She ain't I she ain't even gonna see the message. Like she don't even check her DM. So like yeah. there's no amount of money you could pay. Like some of this opportunities that you're gonna get from Sync is like priceless mm-hmm. and you're not paying for it. And they're gonna pay you to promote your music. So it's like you can't beat Sync. <clears throat> not if you Andy. That's a major key. That that's yeah, that's crazy. The president actually I have another example too. I should say this. So it's not the same song. It's the newest single that I just dropped. It's called Attracted to Money. So uh, it's in a commercial, right? Glorilla is the brand ambassador for the commercial. So that she posted on her social media because she's posting that she's in a commercial. But right up under that is my name and my songs. Now people go check that song and come see me about it. Now ask yourself, what other, what other rapper could you go pay and they're going to go promote your song on their channel and you unknown. They don't know you. They don't know that song. That song ain't got no streams. I just dropped it. So like, you just got to think about sync for the other opportunities, the marketing exposure, the stuff that you can't put money to. Cause mm-hmm. like, if you got, I don't care how much money you got. Some of these artists is not going to post your music, but they will, right. if they're in a commercial and your music playing in the background, cause they don't get right. the pics out. Right. So you got to think about those reasons. Like the marketing part of it is crazy and it's right. free. Like I didn't pay for that. Um, I think, uh, who was it did a reel about a million, like a bunch of other celebrities on made, um, other videos from that first commercial that came out. And it's just like, yo, like I'm not paying for this stuff. They're mm-hmm. paying me to do this, to promote my music. I don't even got no marketing team. I don't need one. The sync placements is the marketing. Facts, facts. I t- yo, real talk. That, yo, that's all real talk. I tell people all the time, I had a record that I did. That record had to be like probably damn near like nine years old. And um. That record got placed in power. I saw the sales go up 135,000%. Hey. 135,000%. <laughs> yo, I'm looking at the, the green. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. You know what I'm yep. saying? Like to see that yep. influence. And it's like, like you said, 
They'll market it for you. They'll get it out there. You ain't got no choice but to listen to it. You sitting up there watching 50 Cent on TV and they put that record in there, you ain't got no choice. You know what I'm yep. saying? So yep. it's like, it's it's undeniable. Like it's, it's amazing. And you know, it's a game changer for artists. I know like back in the days, and you know this coming from Brooklyn, it was like artists wanted to get on doing CDs, mixtapes, selling the them out the trunk of your car. You going to Jamaica Avenue, you selling them to the yep. bootleggers wholesale, trying to make a dollar. And it's like now, you know, you got the ability to work smarter instead of working harder. You know what yep. I mean? You make a song, you put it out there and watch the magic, you know? I I talk about that in my podcast because, yo, I used to sing live on the streets, like busking downtown Barclay Center or like right in front of Atlantic Avenue train station and just like oh, I would hustle my CDs. I would be selling them. Especially when I first quit my job, like to do it, and like you don't gotta go outside. It'd be cold, man. No, <laughs> <laughs> it'd be cold, all right, all right. and the people be cold too because they don't be wanting to hear that. Music. Yeah, they mad. Like, they, 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 they don't be wanting to hear that man. trash. <laughs> exactly. They ain't like, even listening. It's already trash. They ain't listen. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that that's a fact, though. That's a fact. You know, I wanted to ask you too, Tamara. Like in terms of because I know you transitioned from a regular nine to five to doing music full-time can you talk about that because we got so many musicians that listen to this podcast and it's a lot of musicians they want to make that transition from having a nine-to-five job to actually doing music full-time so can you just kind of talk about how that transition was for you and at what point did you know that you were ready to just be able to do music full-time yeah so uh my goal with it I actually quit twice so the first time I quit like I said I was out on the streets hustling CDs blah 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 and um, it got cold. And I know, yo, I had to do something else. Other than that, <laughs> I went back to accounting. Because now you got to remember, I was making, I was already making like six figures. Um, and I didn't want to, I was willing to quit and take a pay cut if I could have did music full time. But I couldn't figure out how to make any money from it. It was just like, you know, you make a couple dollars. Here. Like you're going to sell some CDs, but you're not going to pay the rent with that. You're not going to pay Brooklyn rent with that. So it's just like, yo, I can't sustain this. I have to, you know, I got to go back and work until I can really quit. And so I promised myself, like, I quit a bunch of other jobs. I I talk about this in my book, too. Like, I quit a bunch of stuff um, and just tried different things because I was trying to, I, like, low-key hated accounting because I felt like it was keeping me from my music dreams. So I was trying not to do that when that paid the most. So eventually I wised up. I go get that job because I know how to do that. I know the numbers. And um, I go back and get that bread. And I'm just investing it full time. Um, in my music um, so I was working full-time and I was doing music full-time and I'm talking about you talk about no sleep you talk like yo <laughs> I had to sleep during my lunch break to catch up from like oh last night I was recording in the studio like I had no free time no sleep like it was crazy um, and so my goal was this time I'm not gonna quit until I'll, I'll play this role that I'm gonna do this accounting until my music career money over like overtakes the money I was making from accounting um, Cause you have to remember too, I was traveling as well. I was like a consultant. So basically um, they would keep me up in hotels and stuff like this all the time. And I wouldn't have to pay for food and, and stuff like that. I ain't had no crib because I would travel hundred percent of the time. So I would just record in whatever city I'm in. I was like, you know, um, get their little rental car. I would just use their benefits, keep on, keep on my money and put it into music. Um, so the music licensing, the first, like first year. Okay. So I bad i don't know what happened but yeah, um, all good. yeah i figured your connection job it's all good we pick it back yeah. up it's all good so you were saying 
Uh, I don't even know what part I left off at, but <laughs> yeah, but you know, just, so, I feel like every song you make is another opportunity. Did you hear me say that? Every song you make is another opportunity to make bread. So like you just yeah. be creating new music, get your music to these agents or pitch it direct, like get it how you live. Like, and that's one of the things that I teach. I have a Sync Superstar Academy and I teach artists how to do this because I know like if a song take off, yo, I ain't gonna be able to teach y'all. I ain't gonna be able to help you no more. So it's like, okay, let me do this podcast now. Let me set up this stuff so these people can learn this stuff. Because if the, my song pop, I'm gonna go on tour now. I'm gonna go do this right. stuff like and rip, make 30,000 a night doing it, 50,000 a night. So like, it's like one of them things where like, I'm just putting everything in position now because I already see where it's going. I already know how to get this money. I'm gonna keep doing it. So ain't got no choice but to go up. I'm gonna keep making music. I got hundreds of songs right now, like, mm. and I'm still creating. Like, I don't got no music. Mm. That's fire, you know. And I listened to your records. Like, I heard like you know a lot of records you did, and um, flows is crazy. You know, intonation, Thank connotation, you. breath control, everything is fire. Um, you know, we we you know New Yorkers, we in the lyrics, we in the flows, we in the bars, all of that. Like, who influenced you like growing up, like musically? Like, what what MCs like were ones we use like yo that's mm -hmm. it right there um missy kim biggie as far as like live performance is definitely michael jackson like his um uh, stage presence is crazy um j cole i like a lot jasmine sullivan i love i like i so I, some of my songs i'm singing and rapping and i'll say this too like any genre could get money i i'd be doing a whole lot of genres i don't just be out here just rapping i don't just be out here just doing r&b or soul or whatever whatever beat like, i'm one of them people that feel like i can rap or sing on any beat so i do that like people be sending me crazy beats and it's just like okay let me see what i can do to this one i'm gonna make this song huh? i'm gonna make this beat dope so um i make money in all those genres so it's really just like yo make whatever music you make mm -hmm. if it's dope they're gonna license it like and honestly even if it's not dope this is what i love about sync let me say this artist because y'all y'all be thinking like oh only the hottest artists get in license no i'm telling you they're licensing trash as long as it fits the scene so your focus just needs to be on it being authentic they can tell if you're faking what you're doing or your, your focus just needs to be on quality like it subjectively i don't care whether you love or hate the song if it's a good quality recording and it fits this scene, they're going to use it and they're going to pay you, period. Facts. facts. That's that's big facts. Big facts. Yeah. It's like you got to be in it to win it. Just putting content out there. And yeah, you know, I think that's part of it, too. It's like kind of reworking how you think, because in terms of like being a musician, I think like for me, the biggest transition was like when I first got approached in it was like 2007 when I first got in the sync, you know, and they were mm -hmm. like, hey, we're going to place these songs for you. True to their word, they did. I got paid a nice couple of bands for that. But mm -hmm. I learned it's like, you know, kind of restructuring how I approach music. Like for me as an artist, it was like, you need the intro, you need 16 bars, eight ball hook, 16 bars, eight ball hook. Sync, you working smarter, not harder. You ain't got to mm -hmm. have no three sets of 16 bars. It's like yeah. how I structure the song now is like, look, I put the hook first. I get him with the hook, hit mm him -hmm. with some bars, hit him with the hook again. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like, because they're only going to use a certain portion of the song, you know? Yep. So, I mean, you know, you just kind of rework how you think and your approach. And like you said, yo, as long as it fits the actual, uh, whether it's TV show, movie, whatever it is, they're going to mm -hmm. rock with it, you know? Yep. yep. Like, that's, that's, I agree with fact. that. Yeah. Uh, I say this too. Um, the production is very important in Saint. So like, I know with a lot of hip hop artists, they'll like do something and they'll loop it and they just run that loop the whole time. Like that's gonna be harder to get placed. I'm telling you now, you have to do more than just, okay, you came up with a nice little catchy melody thing or whatever, like whatever sound you got in the chorus, it can't be the exact same in the verse. Like I need to be able to tell the, the difference between the beat in the chorus and the beat, the beat in the verse, like do something mm -hmm. like that. And then as far as the length, you don't gotta go over three minutes, like literally do two verses, do a bridge. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A couple hooks, like, Keep it simple. Don't overthink the song. Don't try to put every idea in that song. Make another song and make that idea over there. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that's a big fact. Big fact. You spoke about the book too. Could you talk about the book a little bit? You know, artists out there that probably want to tap in, they want to purchase it. Could you tell them what it's about and you know Absolutely. a little more info? Yeah. So from sync to superstar is the name of the book. The website is from sync to superstar.com and is literally teaching you strategy to use to go from a sync placement to superstardom without a record label, without a publisher, and without a promo budget. And so I tell my whole story, like how I got started, how I failed, how I got scammed, how much I got scammed for, all that, all the failures in there first. And then I started talking about how I learned about sync, 
And then how it's just been taken off since then. And then I give strategies for once you get a placement, how you move. Um, and so it's like a key, it's like a core strategy. Um, and then I'll say this too, because I, um, there, there are artists that read the book, they like the book and it's like, okay, they want more. They want to figure out how to do this consistently. They want to, they wanted so many placements, they can quit their job. Like that's, that's the goal, right? So the, I, I started teaching a course. I actually started teaching it this year. It's called the 24 hour sync superstar activation challenge. In that course, I'm literally teaching you everything I know and do currently. Like I hold no punches and you know why? there's too much opportunity out here. So I'm not one of those people that need to like hold back stuff. And I was the person that was seeking information and I couldn't find it. And it, like, if this course was out there when I was looking, I would have been took off. I would have been making money. I didn't make money until I figured out sync. So now that I know it, I'm not gonna hold that from some people because it's probably not gonna be, I don't know how long it's gonna be around. When everybody figure it out, they're gonna move to something else. So you need to get in now, you need to get bread now, set yourself up, do whatever you got to do, get into real estate, get into your investment, top, like make your money and make your moves. Cause that's what artists do when they're signed to labels. When they, when they, uh, commu- music take off, when they career take off, what they do, they go buy some businesses, they go get some real estate, they go get some, they invest cause they know their music maybe not going to be selling all the time. Yeah. They got a fan base. They got like, they'll try to tour and stuff after that. But after a while, your fans get older and they stop coming to the concerts. So that's you got to get right. your bread now. Like, Mm-hmm. people always want to wait till everybody know about it now nah, move now because a lot of people know about sync now they found out they did did more especially with covid because people was at home they wasn't making live show money so everybody ran the same thing so like if you don't know about it now you are already behind exactly. um i have a website it is like literally the starting point get music on tv.com it's going to give you a free template so that your songs can be one stop get your split sheets together like that's one thing that one of the things too with sync, like you can't come and don't not have the admin and stuff ready, not know who the splits, not know who own what, you're still figuring out, oh, I wrote this part of the hook, we ain't signed that yet. Like if you got that kind of stuff, you ain't gonna make no bread. So go get your paperwork straight, then you take that music to TV. So yeah. Yeah, that, that's a major gem too. And I'm glad you touched on that too, for like a lot of artists out there, it's very important to make sure that you got your business situated. So whether that be your split sheets, which breaks down exactly, who were the parties that participated in creating this record? Who were the writers? Yep. Who were the producers? Um, mm-hmm. Who's entitled to what? Because mm-hmm. when you're dealing with these turnaround times, a lot of times it could be super quick. You know, a music yep. supervisor will say, hey, look, I need this like yesterday. And there's mm-hmm. no time to have to try to figure out, well, you know, what's this person want? What's that person want? You know, who made the beat? Does it have samples? Um, you know, is it a splice sample? Can you really use it? Can you not right. use it? You got to get ahead of all these things unless you're going to miss out on money. You know? yep, I'm trying to look, they got, I've gotten phone calls. Like we're on the mixing floor. Now the editor is putting the music in, send this, send this high res, send this, send this. And, oh, I'm going to say this too. Instrumental. You're going to lose money if you don't have a version of your song without the vocals on it. So when you're in the studio, go get it now. When you first get the song, so I'm going to give you high res, you need wave or AISF of the full vocal version. And you need that for the instrumental. Cause they're going to come for it. Like if there's a TV show and they're doing a lot of talking, they don't need your vocals. I'm trying to tell you now, you're going to lose the money because you ain't going to be ready. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Facts, big facts, big facts, all gems, all gems. Listen, when well, you dropping some major keys, I got a question for you that we asked all the guests. Cause I asked you, you know, what were your influences? But mm-hmm. question I got for you, top five that are live. Who are your top <laughs> five? Artists. Now they don't gotta be rappers. It could be, you know, R and B soul. Who are right, your top right, five right. artists? Um man, I like so many artists. I feel like this leaves people off, but oh well. So <laughs> it's most of the people that I already said was that I was influenced by. So let me run them again. Um Biggie, Kim, J. Cole, Jasmine Sullivan, Missy. Mm, I'll stop there. Yeah. Dope. But I, I like so many artists. Like, yeah, I like a, I like a whole lot of artists. I just listen to a whole lot of different music from different genres. Like I love I love music. But yeah, those are my top five. That's dope. Those are the ones I want to work with that are a lot. <laughs> <Dope. laughs> no, nah, that's fire. That's dope. That's dope. So, so for all the listeners out there, like what's next? What's coming up on the horizon that they should be checking for? And your social media too. Like, where can they check for you and, and connect with you? Sure. Uh, I'm on everything. Official website is tamarabubble.com. That's T-A-M-A-R-A-B-U-B-B-L-E um i'm on all social media like if you name it i'm on it i'm at tamara bubble i go snatch it up before anybody else do that's another gym like when you come up with these stage names go get your socials go make sure them socials is available but anyway um yeah. i got a podcast 
called I Hear Money. I'm teaching you sing free on the podcast. IHearMoney.com. Go there. If you don't got no bread, you don't got no budget, you can't buy no book, you can't do none of that stuff I'm talking about, start there. I'm going to teach you sing, period. And then um, when you see what I'm giving you away for free, you're going you're gonna to want to go learn what I'm charging for because um, you're going to need bread to do that. But uh, that website is SyncSuperstar.com. And um, yeah, I drop music when I get placements. I'm always getting placements. So I'm always dropping music. I'm always getting money. I hear money. Yeah. That's it. Thank you for having me. <laughs> listen, of course. Listen, listen. We, we, yo, we happy to have you. And, you know, one thing that I love to see too, which is important for me is like, you know, representation matters. So, you know, not only do I like to see artists of color that are thriving in music licensing, but I also like to see them bossed up and doing what you're doing, you know, so it's not just the music, but, you know, it's financial literacy because you're actually educating artists and that's fire. That's dope. You know what I mean? 